hope you're all well let's make a start because i've got a few cards to show you i'm going to stencil the stencil i'm not going to emboss it but i'm just going to stencil it in a couple of colors just to show you i know lisa sort of showed you on tv but i think sometimes they're so rushed that you don't always appreciate the ease although it looks complicated it really isn't and those of you that got the first set will know it definitely isn't right so we're definitely using the stencil and i have used the um, embossing folder as well on the card that i'm going to put together for you but i just wanted to go through the stencil first okay so i'm using both of those at some point i've also used the nested stitch bubble ovals and um, just for one of the elements on the card I've had some of these stenciled that I did some time ago and I've used part of this image on one of my cards. So I've just actually cut it down and just used these two little flowers here. I've also used the Hugs, Kisses and Birthday Wishes from this fabulous, fabulous fonts set. Um, such a cracking set and it, it will suit so many different cards. There is absolutely a sentiment for every occasion, I reckon. Definitely brilliant set i've also used this set but i've only actually used this word here and they're all dies there's no there's no stamps but this one i've used twice because it just fits into the element that i've added it to <clears throat> i've also used the nested scalloped and plain stitch squares but only for the inside of my card um i've used the nested scalloped and plain circles just to cut one of the elements I've also used the um, stencils for the Ultimate 3D Alphabet. I've used the B on this occasion. And I've also used the Edge Cuts Essential Edges die set. Now I'd, so we're going to stencil this. And I'm only going to use two colours. I'm using the Juicy Pineapple from set one. And the Margarita from set two. Because I just love the colours together. Um, and I didn't want to... I didn't want to go mad with colours i just wanted to use a couple all right so i'm going to start off with this and i'm going to go around all four sides just with this piece all right just to show you that if you really wanted to you could just use that element um if you wanted but i wanted to show you just how easy it would be to pick out certain elements on the card and if you look at all the DT cards that the the group that, you know, the, the girls did for the shows, you'll see that people have picked out little elements of this. Um, and, I, and I think that's the beauty of this, this stencil. When you look at the finished articles, you would never think it would all, all have been done with one stencil. Definitely not. They're just fabulous. So I'm just going to go around all four sides and do this bit. And then take it off and show you so that you can see that if you were going to make just, you know, a square card that you just wanted, perhaps some sort of little frame around, you could absolutely do that just by using this one element on the stencil. And it's so quick and easy to use. It's just, it's just brilliant. See, now you could just use that. OK, so that's just that that one element there. All right. Now, I know Natalia's done um, a little reel and she's masked off this piece in the middle, which, again, of course, you can do. Or you can mask off other pieces and just use little elements from, you know, within the design. They're, they're just so versatile. So I've turned it round and now I'm going to go in with a different colour. I'm going to use my margarita. So I'm just going to add this to these flowers here. Now, hopefully this will show up the fact that the first colour is definitely yellow when I add this green. Hopefully. So I'm just going to go around and add these flowers without using the rest of the elements on that part of the stencil, just so that you can see that you know you, you can pick out little bits and just use parts of the stencil you don't have to use it all 
as it looks. Although when you do, it's fabulous. And you'll see that I've put a little F in one corner. It's because there's a front and a back to the stencil. So if you put it in the wrong way around, it won't fit in the embossing folder. So just line it up with your embossing folder and then you'll be able to see which, which way around it goes. So now I'm going to do the rest of this. Okay, and I think I'm going to go, shall I leave that? Now I'm going to do that green and I'm going to do the rest of this yellow. So that's my green in the middle. And then we're going to go yellow on absolutely everything else. So now I'm going to come in with the green before I move this around. And I'm going to come up the middle of here with my green. And hopefully that will just change that colour up a little bit. See, you probably can't see it. I will lift it up when I finish, but there is a nice sort of ombre effect on there. It really looks really nice. So I'm going to turn it round. I'm going to go back in with my green here on the middle bit. And then we're going to go yellow on absolutely everything else and come up the middle of here with the green again. So you can see how quickly it comes together. It doesn't take any time at all. And that's half the fun. You know, it, it's so quick and so easy to just add a bit of a pattern to a plain, simple card without going over the top. So you don't have to use the whole of the stencil. You can use parts of it and just decorate the parts of your card that you want. You don't have to emboss it either, but it's totally up to you. Oh, I like that. I might actually go back and do a little bit of a little bit of green on those yellow, I think. See, this is the beauty that once you've once you've started, you can go back in and add a little bit of extra colour where you think it, it warrants it or not. Totally and utterly up to you. And we'll do them all. Okay, see, it's totally changed the look of those flowers. Totally and utterly changed them. All right, so we're going round again. Go with the green in the middle. And I've got to be honest, green isn't a colour I use a lot of. Um, I mean, you know me. I'm a, I'm a purple girl at heart. But I think sometimes it's just nice to challenge yourself to use different inks. <clears throat> so we'll go back in here with the yellow and then what I'll do is go over the centres of those flowers again with the green And just go up the centre of there with that green and it's really just to just to add a little bit more depth of colour in certain places and then into the centres of those flowers not doing the whole of the flower just going into the centre in a circular motion right in the middle so I'm, I'm actually I'm actually adding the ink from the from the mylar really because I'm I'm not starting in the, you know, in the full petal at all. Oh, I like that. I like that. Right, so last bit of green in here. And it does look totally different in real life to what it looks on camera. Um, and I'm hoping that when I can, when I can lift it up and show you in a second, you'll notice. They're just, they're just fabulous colours. They go together so beautifully. And like I said, it is really quick and easy to just fill these apertures in. Because Lisa's done all the hard work for you. Must be a scary place inside Lisa's head sometimes, I think. 
nice but scary. So I'll just come up the centre of those fronds. I really like this part of the stencil. I think it's really effective and you could actually pick that part out and just not use anything else if you wanted to. So you see, I mean what was that? 10 minutes to put those colours down there and I've only used two like I said. Um, you could absolutely go to town and use half a dozen like I think Natalia used about three or four on her reel that she did. But if I lift it up, hopefully it won't come out of focus. You might be able to see the colour a bit better. It is definitely yellow and green, not, not green and green. So that was just to show you how easy the stenciling is to do. OK, and then I'm going to show you the card that I'm going to put together with you. So this was the card that I made. And basically all this uses is the embossing folder and a little bit of the stencil just to do this one flower here okay and all I've done is is literally tape off the bits that I don't need on the stencil and I've used one flower and then turned it round to find the corresponding petals and use the other one and just tape it off so that you only get that if you notice on here you can see that I've gone into some holes because I didn't tape it off and I've, I've gone where I shouldn't have gone but I really don't think it will matter. So that was the card that I've put together. And you'll see that inside I've just, this is where I've used the nested um, and scalloped squares. And I've just used that one element, like I said, just to put some decoration on the inside. And the reason I put this on the inside was just to give the card a little bit more stability when it stands up. Because the base of this card is Lisa's white texture card. And on its own... Um, it probably wouldn't be strong enough to stand up as a card because I've got some weight on the front. So I've put that in the centre just to give it a little bit more stability inside. OK, so if we stencil that bit first, I'll just put my card somewhere safe. Right. So this is my inside for my card. All right. So I'm just going to put this on my on my peg system and then I'm going to position my card. So that my stenciling is going to be totally within that within that frame. So I'm going to go with the green, I think, on this occasion. Yeah, I'm going to go with the green because the basis of my card is, is sort of a greeny colour. So I'm just going to stencil this down here. And then I can put this in my base card and that's the back of the inside already done and now I'm going to move my card round rather than my stencil because the piece of card isn't big enough to move the stencil round and fit it all in the right place okay so we'll just go back in with this okay so that's just that one element again that I've used. Right, so the base of your card for this, you will need a piece of card that is six by 12 and you're gonna score it at three inches and nine inches, okay? And then you're just gonna fold those flaps over and burnish those score lines to form your card base. OK, I'm not worried about the writing because I'm going to hide that with the piece that I've just stenciled. OK, so that's your card base. Just make sure it doesn't meet in the middle. If it does meet in the middle, just trim a little bit off, but that's fine. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is put this down so that it's done and out of the way. And then we can go through and I'll show you how I did the other bits. So I'm going to pop this down in the centre. So this will be where you write your your greeting to whoever, whatever lucky person is going to get this card. OK, so that's the main part of your base of your card done. All right. Now we need to do the panels. All right. Now, the easiest way that I found to do it, I mean, I did mess around yesterday. Cutting and whatever, and then I suddenly thought, well, why have you done that? There's an easier way 
there's definitely an easy way to do things isn't there if there's a complicated way you can guarantee i will find it but the easiest way that i found to do this was cut yourself three pieces of six by six card because your card is a six by six card isn't it that you're making all right put yourself a line at three inches at the top and at the bottom and then place your die which is obviously out of the essential edges set on your card and make sure that the cut line of the die sits on that three inch pencil line top and bottom okay and then run it through your die cutting machine which i'm going to do and then take my die off okay so that's that bit don't need that bit again so now you've got your edges so you've got a mirror image all right so that when you look at this these are a mirror image of this okay now then i've already cut the other two pieces that i need all right now this piece is on this side and this is on this side that's how i've cut them and although this is six by six i'm going to cut this down by an eighth of an inch okay because i want it to sit inside that six by six card Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut this down by an eighth of an inch and make sure that you cut it at the same edge. So I've cut mine along the top, so I'm going to cut these along the top. And I'm just going to cut that off by an eighth of an inch at the top. And that way they will sit inside that panel, okay? So that's that bit. I'm gonna use that again in a second, so I don't wanna move it too far. Now you'll see here that this one sits inside this one, okay? And that's what I want to do with this piece, is position that about the same distance apart as the second one is from the first one, all right? So you've got three layers that you can actually see the edge of, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'll take that, take that one away because I only need this one. Position that on there like that. Make sure it's even top and bottom if you can. It's not going to matter too much because your embossing is going to line up so it won't look odd. Flip it over and draw a line. And that's where you're going to cut this piece okay don't worry if you missed any of that i'm going to repeat it again for the other side and then pop it into your pop it into your guillotine and cut it down and then you've got three pieces that sit like that okay so you've got three edges that all show now i'm going to make these stand out a little bit more so the next thing you need to do with this is emboss it but i'm just going to do the other piece before we do the embossing and then i can get rid of my guillotine so again you're going to do exactly the same thing you're going to use this second piece on here line it up so that the edges match Flip it over, should be straight, draw yourself a line and then trim it off along that line. Make sure it's straight in your, in your guillotine, okay, and then cut it off. And then you've got your last piece that sits, I just went a bit mad there, maybe cut that a bit short, but it's not going to matter, okay. So you've got your last piece. Now you need to emboss them. Now, all you need to make sure of is that you put your piece of card in the same place in the embossing folder each time. All right? Where's my embossing folder? So for the piece that goes on this side, use this side of your embossing folder and line it up so that you've got a similar sort of gap at the bottom here as you have at the top and make sure that your card just comes over the edge of the embossing so can you see that 
I hold it up a little bit. So the embossing is along here. It's difficult to see when it's white. But you just want to make sure that you've got all the embossing here in and that you've got a similar gap, top and bottom, so that it doesn't look uneven. All right, and then we're just going to run that through. So that's that piece. And then you're going to do the other piece and you're going to line it up on the other side of the embossing folder. OK, because it's opposite. All right, so I'm going to pop that in there and then run that through. So now I've got all my bits, my bits and my pieces. One piece. Make sure you've got them all right. That's that bit. Okay, so now you've got all your pieces lined up and you see how the embossing just follows on because you've lined each piece up in exactly the same place. Okay, so that lines those up and all your embossing lines up so that when you put them on top of one another, it will still line up and it will look fabulous. All right, and same with the other side. Okay, you can make these as wide as you want. If you want this these pieces a little bit narrower, you can do. It's totally up to you. This is just to show you the idea. Okay, now then, I need to put these on here. But before I do that, I need to do some decoration on them. All right, because I want them to stand out a little bit. But you can see the effect. If I pop those on there, now I am going to 3D them, so they are going to stand out a little bit more. All right. Now, all I would say, when you cut this first one, you're going to have to cut quite a bit off. But what you need to do with the first one to get you the line where you want it is to actually sit it on your card on that fold and then flip it over and draw the line on your card. OK, I'm actually going to take another piece off here, I think, because I don't think it's quite narrow enough. So I am just going to trim a tiny little piece off here. Don't think it's going to make any difference. Because I want it to sit just inside this line here. But I don't want it to go over the edge, which it now doesn't. OK, you see it's actually sitting on the edge. All right. So these pieces I'm going to put flat and then the other two I'm going to 3D. But before I do that, you can see on this one that I've actually coloured the edges so that the edges stand out all right and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the green rather than the yellow because i think the green will be a little bit sharper all right now i suppose i could have done this ahead of time but i didn't so you just have to bear with me i don't want to make a mess on my mat but now you can do this one of two ways you can either go around with your brush or a sponge and just do the edges but that takes forever so I'm actually going to come in with my brush and just go all the way around the edge like so and yes it might pick up some of the embossing but I really don't mind and I really don't think it will make that much difference because all you want to do is just define the edges so that they stand out because you put in white on white again if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, you can do just white on white if you want. And if you don't want to define the edges with any colour, you absolutely don't have to. I just I just wanted to tie everything together. And you'll see what I mean when I put the last couple of elements onto the, onto the card. So this is going to take a little bit of time. bottom one is going flat down on the card and again I'm only going sort of on the edge 
with just one line down the middle because I don't want to, you, you won't need a huge amount of glue. I hope I've measured this one right and it sits inside the card, which it does. Excellent. A little bit of overspill there. Okay, so that's that one that side. And then we'll just glue this one down this side. But can you see now what I mean about just inking the edges just to make them stand out a little bit? Now I am going to be adding 3D pads to these. So now I can put my other layers down. Now when I'm putting these down I am going to just pop a little bit of glue on the pads. Um, partly because as I've said before pads do tend to dry out over time and I wouldn't want this to fall apart. But so adding the glue just gives you a little bit of wiggle room to place these down and line them up. Um, whereas if you put them down straight away with just pads, you might be, and you slip, then you might sort of um, not line them up properly. So it is just a tiny bit of glue just to give me that little bit of manoeuvrability so that I can line them up properly. So I'm going to do it this way so that I can line the edges up. Okay. So I'll line that up there and down the bottom. Now can you see what I mean about why I've done the edges on all of them so that they stand out against each other? okay so then all i need to do is just add my little embellishments onto the front right so i said i'd use the um bubble uh ovals and i've just cut i think this is the smallest one that goes underneath the lattice shape um, and again, I've inked around the edge with the same colour, the margarita. And then this is where I've used that, that hugs sentiment. And again, all I've done is inked up some texture card and then cut it out of the same colour so that it all uh, matches. And then I've cut it in black as well. OK, so I've done a black um, drop shadow. Now, I think sometimes I've said to you, I, I do use grey quite a bit um, because I think sometimes black can be a bit harsh. But with these colours, I think grey would be lost. So I've used black on this because I think it makes that green really pop. And again, I've 3D'd this. So I'm just take the backing off my pads. And the reason I went with the ovals was because it's just fitted this part perfectly. Um, it was just exactly the right shape to fit there and just follow that line round. So that was why I went with the ovals. OK, so I put that down there. Now, you know, I didn't use glue on the back of that because um, I forgot, basically. And then this one, again, I did exactly the same. I've just picked out one of the flowers and I've actually used a blue and a green on here. And then this fitted up here, again, following the curve of the these pieces, just fitted up there quite nicely. See, now that flower isn't exactly in the middle, but I don't really think it matters. So there you go. There's the card that we've put together today along the same lines as this one. But the other cards that I did, so I said I'd use the alphabet. Um, and again, I've just used that, that one small element from the corner um, of that stencil. And I've just used some flat back pearls. And then this is from the washi sets. One of the sentiments from the washi sets. Um, so I did that one this morning. And then I did this one. Um, because I've seen quite a few of these in the group. And I really liked the idea of it. So again I've used Lisa's flat back pearls. And the flat back gems. Um, and I've just picked out one of the elements on the stencil. Just to put a little bit of interest down here. And then I've used one of the flag dies. And I think this sentiment came from one of the sugar and spice sets. 
so I've just sort of added that as a as a little bit of a bonus and then this one is the off cut of this one and this is where I used that posy of roses piece that I cut away just to put something a little bit different on the corner you can see I've used a matte layer here but I haven't bothered on here all right just to make it look a little bit different and then this was the first one I did and I've used anthracite and shocking pink on here Again, flat back gems, um, sentiment from the washi sets. And what else did I use? Oh, yeah, I did a little bit of um, doodling in the middle of these flowers instead of using gems. And I've used Lisa's fine liner pens to do that. Can you see that? So it just look like a little checked centre in the middle of those flowers, just for something a little bit different rather than gems. Yeah. So you can you can see that it is possible to make so many different types of cards using all of it, some of it, tiny little elements, bigger elements. It's it's entirely up to you. Um, and I will use this one. I might cut it up a bit. I might not. Um, but I really I'm quite happy with that. I like that. And these will have probably gems in the middle as well. So. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Enjoy the rest of your week. I will see you back here on Thursday and take care of yourselves. So thanks for joining me, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.